Hello, my name is Patrick Nebock, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a layered material inside Fear Studio. Um, before we start, let's see what we are going to create. We are going to create an old rusted metal that has uh, chipped paint on it. And um, the first thing we have to do is actually find some reference images. So we look. We know how the rust will look and uh, how old metal looks, uh, the chipped paint, and all these details. This will help us later to create the textures. Okay, now back here in Fia, I already have have set up the color of my paint I want. Um, can set up the color with our color lab, or if you want to select it interactively we have here beside the color chip an icon if you click on it you see we have a compact color picker and this icon over here allows you to switch between RGB or hue saturation and value so uh, like I said I already picked the color and also a roughness for the paint now a good idea is to write down the RGB values because we can use this later uh, when we are creating the texture. So let's have a look at this material. What you see is a nice red paint. Now the next step is actually to um, Go for the metal part, which will be the base, will be under the paint. For that, I start with one of the metals. I like to use the stainless steel, so I drag it over here. And um, let's start rendering, and we will adjust the reflectance and the roughness until we have the values. Let's say for the um, um, minimum roughness we want, and then we do the same for the maximum roughness we want for the metal. So this is a little bit of uh, fiddling around, but uh, if you remember the um, reference images, uh, we have more or less an idea uh, what kind of reflectance color we are going to use. So let's just start with the interactive render. And we um, try to find the value and the roughness. Well, maybe 25 as the max, uh, the minimum uh, roughness for our metal. And the value. Let's see. Something around this. Okay, so again, we can write down the values. RGB. Adjust the value over here. And then later on we can adjust the colors uh, when we create a texture. And we also write down the roughness, 25%. So now let's have a look which should be uh, the maximum roughness for our metal. Okay, let's go with 50. Mm -hmm, that's quite rough. Maybe 40. Yeah, that's better. And also, um, the more oxidized the metal is, the darker it will become. So let's make this nice dark. Well, something around this. Okay, so now we have our basic values for reflectance 
and for the reference. Now it's time to go and switch to Photoshop. Okay, the first thing I have to say that this is not a tutorial about how to create textures. For that, uh, we would need hours and hours of tutorial because uh, it's an art of its own. But there are a lot of tutorials uh, you can find on the internet. And there are also very nice um, texturing tools from Mari to um, Quixel or Substance Designer, Substance Painter. Um, there are a lot of uh, tools that work very nice where you can actually paint uh, directly on your model. So in this case, I um, to make things a little bit easier, I went with a procedural, uh, just some clouds rendering um, so you can see the values. Remember that uh, in FIA we uh, looked for the min and max values for the color and for the roughness. So um, this is a base texture I've created with the values I've written, I've written down. Um, there's a small tip here I made um, just with black and white uh, cloud render and now to get the min and max uh, values, what you can do is go to image, adjust, levels. You see here the output level. So we can move this. Let's say we don't want to have pure white. We move it to the value we um, have set in clear. And for the blacks, the same. And this way, we know that our darkest color is at uh, the value we have set for the minimum value, and the brightest color uh, value is also the max value we have set. Okay, so I have set up here this uh, basic material. And uh, if you work with um, photo textures, it's very important that you eliminate any kind of light information. We don't want to have any highlights or shadows because remember, Fear is a light simulator, it's a physical based rendering system. So imagine you have a texture where you have shadows on the left, so the sun is coming from, uh, from the right, and um, you set up your scene in Fear the, the other way around. So you have the sun on the left, uh, it will look very strange, it will look wrong. So when you create the color texture for metals, for the fuse, whatever, no light information. This is for all the maps. We don't want to have light information on any of our maps we create. So, um, I also have created now the roughest map for this uh, um, metal. And the roughest map, you can see it like this. Okay, so the bright parts is the metal that is less uh, damaged and the darker ones are much uh, are more oxidized. So the more oxidized parts will be more rough than uh, the bright parts. So in a way it's like an opposite map. So I have created this one over here. And again, I made sure that the min and max values I have chosen uh, when I was making the test in Fear Studio are more or less once I, uh, I wanted. So the only thing left is saving these two maps and we go back to Fear Studio. Okay, back now here in Fear Studio, I have applied the maps we have created in Photoshop to reflectance and to the reference. I set reference 200 and so the grayscale values of the reference map will uh, determine how rough the surface is. Now let's have a look. So to me this looks fine, it's actually uh, how I want the metal to look like, that's nice variation. And um, now in case I wanted to have a little bit more reflective, um, you just have to adjust this roughness value, let's say we set it to 80, so you see we are changing the look a little bit. Um, I talked about 
uh, how to adjust the roughness with uh, tone mapping, with the roughness setting, uh, in the tutorial called Reflectance and Roughness. So if you didn't uh, seen it, have a look because there is quite a lot of uh, important information. So now that we have this base material for the metal, it's time to add uh, more damage, uh, some rust, create a bump map. So uh, let's go back to Photoshop. So let's get some uh, rust on this metal. I actually have a, here a folder and you can see how I build up uh, the elements. Example here is just the where the rust will come. And so building up little by little all the elements until we have our final texture. You see there is no light information, it's all plain color. This is how a fuse or reflecting map should look like. So now to uh, to create the roughness map, we can actually reuse some of the elements here. Because let's say, um, let's turn this off. And we stay with this one. If we turn off base, we see that uh, we only have this oxidized part. We could now copy this one. Uh, to the layer, the folder of the roughness, and um, we already know that this part will be rougher than the other one because it's more oxidized, so uh, we will uh, we'll have a brighter color for the roughness. And we go on with the rust here, and turn this one off, and the rust is built up here with more elements, so we can also copy this one. And we know that this rust is rougher than um, this one over here. So it would be nearly pure white. Not totally, probably a roughness of 70 or 80 is enough. But uh, you see that each element will have its roughness. So again, we can copy and paste it to the roughness folder and give it the um, correct. Um, a value for roughness. So, like I say, all these elements build up the final color texture for our metal. So, let's have a look at the roughness. And here again, this part is rougher than the rest. Here, I did make too rough, but still brighter than the rest, so it will be rougher. And also for the rust, you see, the rust is the, the part that is the roughest of all, so that's why it's also brighter. So this will be the roughness map for our final metal. So now again, saving each map, just this one. And then the next one, and we see how it works in, inside FIA. Okay, I have applied the safe textures to the corresponding channel, so the color texture to the reflectance, the roughness to the roughness, and the bump to the bump. So let's have a look. And this looks all right to me. So you can see that our rust looks like rust. It has the correct roughness, and um, yeah, the roughness, roughness map is working uh, like it should. And uh, now it's time to add the red paint again. So I have saved the red paint here, and I just drag it inside the schematic viewer. This way we add the material to the material that's already here. Now, uh, by default, 
get tilted side by side, which means is a mix of 50% and 50%. But what we want is to have the paint on top. So with the paint selected, we use the move arrow up. So what we can see in the preview is that uh, now we have a perfect paint covering the whole object. But what we want is um, old paint shipped off and uh, uh, yes, weather it. So uh, we have to tell Thea somehow where's the paint and where shows the metal under it. And we do this by creating a map for the layer weight. This usually is a black and white map. So uh, let's go back to Photoshop and create this map. <laughs> 